got six months sitting here Vienta a lot of Norsk. How to come in updating. I'm back in Norway and it feels so good to be back in the country that inspired me to learn its language. It's great to be here in the tiny fishing villages of northern Norway in the Lofoten Islands where I get to listen and use the language everywhere I go. It's been six months now since I started learning Norwegian. I started in October with Cactus Language School and here I am putting the language into practice. So I'm going to give you a bit of an update on how it's all going, what I'm struggling with, what I'm finding easy and what I plan to do with all the challenges that I'm facing. So here is my six month update on how my Norwegian is progressing. First things first, what is my language learning routine? Well, as you know from the previous video, I have a full-time job and I also run the Intrepid Guide. If you want to watch that video, I'm going to link that down in the description of how I manage learning the language and having a full-time job and running my blog. But I'm going to focus now on the actual things that I do to learn Norwegian. So I have to break up my time and I have to optimize every piece of time that I have throughout the day and throughout the week. So to be honest, the majority of my language study comes from my language learning class, which is every Wednesday night. So after work, I have a two hour language class at Cactus Language School. It's just a 15 minute bus ride from work. And that's where I really get to sort of just focus on the language. So usually at the start of the language class, we'll work in groups just to sort of warm up. The teacher may even do a dictation to us where she will read out something or she will play an audio and then we have to write down what we hear. And then from there, we'll start to look at the grammar. We may look at new pieces of grammar or we may revise what we've currently learned. And we also get into little groups and we talk to each other and we put the language into practice. So at the end of the lesson, the teacher will give us homework to do. And I usually like to do this the day after so I can revise what we've covered on the Wednesday night. And this just sort of helps to reinforce what we've learned so I don't forget anything. So our teacher, her name is Sybil and she's amazing, she will send us an email either the same night or the day after telling us all the different things that we've covered and she'll give us exercises that we can then go back and revise and then any sort of additional reading material that we'll need for the following week. And because she's sending these exercises to me electronically, I can fill them out, send them back to her, she'll send them back to me with any corrections and any additional notes and that means I don't have to wait a whole week to find out if I was right or wrong. So when I'm in language class, I'm using different language learning apps and I'm toggling between them because they give me all sorts of different exposure to different vocabulary which is what I really need to focus on in the beginning stages of learning Norwegian. So I use Mondly, I use Duolingo and I'm using Drops a little bit as well now uh, and just to mix up the different learning material that I've been exposed to since being in Lofoten I've picked up a nice quiz book and I've also got a crossword book. So this will also help me to learn different vocabulary from what I'm learning in class as well and just to mix things up a bit. Um, and one of the um, exercise sheets that our teacher gives us and grammar explanations is from this Exploring Norwegian Grammar. And this is something that you can't buy anywhere online. It's really hard to get. So I bought this one here in Norway. Um, but yeah, the teacher is really great at finding resources all over the internet and sort of bringing them all together. So we, ha we don't just focus on one textbook. We sort of spread uh, and we get different exposure to all these different explanations. I usually find that the more explanations you get, the easier it is to sort of understand the different grammar points. So that's really helpful. So in the morning, I like to do a couple of like short language lessons on the app. Uh, I might revise any sort of notes that I've taken from the previous week's lesson. Uh, when I'm at work, I usually listen to either music, Norwegian music or a podcast. And on the way home, I do something similar. So depending on how tired I am, I might listen to something. And that's just more sort of like passive learning. where I'm just listening. I'm not like focusing on any of the grammar points and I'm sort of look, hearing for any sort of words that I recognize. And that will help me to like remember it in context. So yeah, I sort of try and do it about half an hour spread throughout the day. And that's basically all I'm doing at the moment to focus on improving my Norwegian. So what are some of the challenges that I'm facing with learning Norwegian? Well, there's no one way of speaking the language. There are so many different dialects around the country. Now, this is due to the fact that it was a very, and still is a very mountainous country. And because it is so mountainous, that this sort of acted like a fence between bridges and different dialects and different accents evolved. So now the language that I'm learning is Bukmal, and no one really speaks Bukmal. It's one of the two written forms that you will come across. There is Bukmal, which literally translates to book tongue, and then there's Ninoshk, which is New Norwegian. And New Norwegian or Ninoshk is basically the language that you'll mainly hear in the like the smaller villages and the smaller towns. 
but in places and big cities like Oslo and two-thirds of the country they use a language that is very similar to Bukmal and that's sort of the one that you will learn if you're learning Norwegian. So that means that when I'm listening to Norwegian, whether that be music, movie, podcast or a TV show, I'm getting all sorts of different input, different accents, different pronunciation. So say for example uh, in Bergen they will say Meg instead of May. Uh, they won't use the feminine gender, everything is either masculine or neutral so I have to get used to that. And it's basically, you know, I have to sort of consider, right, well, if I want to focus on Bukmal, I basically I need to just focus on TV programs where the presenters are going to be speaking in a very similar form of Bukmal, because no one really speaks Bukmal, only students do who are learning Norwegian. Because as I said, the dialects change so much between towns, villages and cities as well. Another thing I have to get used to is remembering where the stress falls on the syllables in Norwegian. Now I've picked up a bit of a habit with French and Italian with putting the stress on the second to last syllable. But in Norwegian, that's not the case and I have to remember to put it at the beginning of the word. So instead of saying Lofoten, I need to say Lofoten. So I need to just move that emphasis to the beginning of the word and this trips me up all the time. So to help me get used to the shift on the emphasis of the syllables, I just basically need to listen more to language. I need to use it more and I need to be corrected more. And I get all of those things in class. So this is just something that's going to happen and come naturally over time. One of the frustrations that you have when you first start learning a language is that there's a lot of input and there's not much output. Output in the sense that you can't really say what you want to say. You'd be like, oh, what's the word for this? Or how do I say that in the past tense? So this is a bit of a struggle that you have in the beginning. I'm very much in that phase right now. But since I've been in Norway and I've been looking up different vocabulary for different situations, I've been able to put it into practice. So you just have to be patient with yourself in the beginning. I am very impatient. I like to get things done. I like to move quickly. But I know that I can't do that because of time. And it all it is is language learning. It just takes time. Time and patience and perseverance and passion. So what have I learned about Norway, the Norwegians and the Norwegian language? Well, the first thing I learned is the fact that they don't really use please, which is varsesnil, but they'll say tuck for everything. So say for example, you go to the supermarket and they'll ask you, oh, do you want a plastic bag? And you'll say ja tuck instead of ja varsesnil. So tuck for everything. I'm also loving how similar Norwegian and English sound sometimes. And there are a few sentences that I picked up during class that I'm like, wow, that sounds just like English. So say there has been an example where they've said uh, vi kan gå til dem, so we can go to them, or det er op til oss, so it is up to us. And another one is hvor er vi nå, so where are we now? And I'm like, wow, this is crazy similar. <laughs> so all in all, I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've been making and I can definitely see a huge difference from when I was here last time, which was three months ago in December, when I was basically just listening to the language. I wasn't actively participating. At this time around, I've had more confidence to actually open my mouth and just to throw myself into the deep end a little bit. And I actually went to the supermarket and conducted my whole conversation in Norwegian when I couldn't find something. So let's take a look and see how that went. So when you spend a week in Norway, at some point you have to go food shopping. So I'm gonna head inside this Bunpris supermarket and put my new Norwegian skills to the test. class we always learn about these runstika and I'm like what are these runstika? So I'm at the supermarket and I found them. So this is what the Norwegians have for breakfast and this one has three different types and they're basically just bread rolls that you can have for different times of the day but these ones are frokost so it means they're breakfast uh, bread rolls. Tonight I want to have some pasta but I can't seem to find the tortellini that I'm after so I'm going to try and find someone who can help me. Hi guys! Hey! hey. Uh, where can you find uh, tortellini pasta or pasta sauce? I think you have two of them up on the bench here. Okay. Yeah, thousand thanks. Hi Shada! So she said I need to go to Hilleradened, which is two rows down. So let's try and find this pasta sauce and the pasta tortellini. Can you tell me what? Yeah. So that's it, my first shopping trip in Norwegian.
I'm really loving the social aspect of the Cactus Language School class as well. There's a whole bunch of us ranging from 20 to 50 years old and coming from different parts of the world. I come from Australia, we've got Brits, we've got Americans, we've got Spanish and we all just get along really well. We have lots of fun and giggles in class. So we've also created a WhatsApp group which is really nice and this is a place where we share links to different resources that we've found or any sort of events that we've come across that are happening in London and it's just a nice way for us to keep in contact, maybe ask each other any questions or share things that we're struggling with with the language and it's just yeah a nice part of the social aspect of being in a language class. So that's my six month Norwegian update. If you want to learn your own foreign language be sure to check out Cactus Language School. I'm going to link to them in the description below and make sure you check out the other videos that I've made about learning languages. I've got one about how to learn a language with a full-time job and the other one is what to expect in your first language class. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Until next time, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Hadebra! Bye!